Hey guys, what's happening? Today's bass lesson is going to show you with one simple yet deadly scale exercise how to move fluidly all across the neck, how to know every position of every scale, every time, all over the place on your bass neck. Uh, it's going to completely kick your butt, but it's going to be worth it. This is a workout, and this exercise is called the Beast. It's, I mean, I just call it that, so I don't know how official it is. It's not on like Merriam-Webster or anything. Um, I learned this exercise from a Billy Sheehan video several years ago, which is still on YouTube, and the link is in the description if you want to take a look at it. But he was talking about this exercise that he did. Now, Billy Sheehan is not a big theory dude. He, I don't know how he does it, but he plays all this incredible technical stuff, mostly by ear. Um, but he was saying that the only like scale exercise he ever did was this one that I'm about to show you, where he would start on the bottom, the lowest note of the bass neck that fit within the scale, and would go all the way up to the top and play every position in between. And I started working on it, and I went from being a, uh, kind of stuck in these little like one octave boxes uh, which I've been showing you in previous beginner videos or even in these little two octave boxes um, I went from there to being able to just move wherever I want on the neck and always know where I am within the scale that I'm using so this exercise is incredibly helpful I don't know of any other uh, exercise that would accomplish what this one does because it's so uh, simple and systematic and it just makes you do every possible combination of positions uh, within a scale. So that being said, that's why I call it the beast. You can also call it the three note per string scale exercise uh, and I'm going to explain how that works uh, in a minute. Um, you want to get the PDF for today, the link is right below my face. Um, and that's totally free as always, and I have the exercise written out there in C major, which is what we're going to do today, but as I'll say later in the video too, you want to practice this in all 12 keys, minor scales, major scales, Dorian, all your modes, um, and work on the speed, but we'll get into that in a minute. Let me just uh, demo the exercise for you after I explain it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do here, this is all going to be notes of C major, just the plain old C major scale. I'm going to start on the lowest note of the scale possible on the bass neck, which is the open E string. That's the third of the scale, right? So we're going to start there, then we're going to play three notes per string and go up to the G string of the scale. So we're going to play E, F, G on the E string, then the next three notes of the scale on the A string, A, B, C, D string, D, E, F, G string, G, A, B. So now what I've done is I've played three notes per string of the C major scale. Now I'm just going to shift that up one scale note, which is a C here, and then I'm going to come back down. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F. And that's just going to keep happening. I'm going to play three notes per string. Finish with that position, shift up one. So every position, I'm just going to keep saying this over and over again so it makes sense, three notes per string and then you move on. And the reason it's three notes is just the way that the bass neck is tuned is that that's about how many scale notes you can play before you need to shift. If the instrument was tuned in fifths, it would be four notes per string. But uh, if you play four notes per string on bass, you move diagonally, see that? So this exercise, we're moving horizontally in horizontal position blocks and moving all the way up the neck to the top. Then we're going to repeat that top position and come back down. So let me just play it for you. It's a little, it's pretty simple, but it's hard to explain and really get it under your fingers at first. But once you grasp this, it's going to make a huge impact on your bass playing. So let me just play this for you.
Okay, so that's the basic exercise. Obviously, we're going to start slower than that. Also, if you can spot the wrong note in how I just played it, you win a prize. I don't know what the prize is yet, but uh, there is <laughs> one wrong note in there, as you will find yourself doing as you take this exercise on for yourself. So, let me just talk us through this again. This is all written out in the sheet music, so it might help to just look at the tablature. But again, these are all notes of the C major scale, just C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. We're starting on the lowest one we can, which is E in this case, and we're going up to the highest one we can, which on a two octave neck is this G. Now, if you're playing a Fender bass, it's going to be a D. Uh, you might have 21 frets, in which case you can go up to an E. So, uh, whatever however many frets you have, just chop off the part that's written in the exercise where it goes higher than you can go and pick up uh, where you can. Again, we're basically the idea is we're going to play every note we can within one position, which means three notes per string. So that's all within that little box. Now we're going to scoot it up to the next possible position, which would be from this F to this C. Our first position started on an E and went up to a B. Our next position is going to start up on a C and go down to an F. Our next position will start on G and go up to a D. So they're all basically about an octave and a fifth uh, is the size of the position just because that's how many fingers we have, that's how big human hands are. That's all just kind of how it happens to work out on bass. So every position, three notes per string, all within the C major scale, I promise. The exact left hand fingerings I don't have written in there because it's just whatever works for you. You can obviously look at how I'm doing it and imitate that if it helps. The main things to consider are just the general principles of uh, good left hand technique, keeping your fingers moving as little as possible, make sure you're not uh, torquing your wrist too much because you don't want to get carpal tunnel and stuff like that. I want to address some uh, issues that will probably come up if you're checking this out for the first time. Uh, one is just going to be the stretching thing. People, especially because just I'm, a, I'm six foot seven and I have big hands, people are always saying to me, oh, I can't do what you're doing because you have huge hands. And um, there are lots of professional bass players, you know, uh, Victor Wooten is the example I usually pull because he's really short, who have small stubby fingers and they're way cooler bass players than I am. Um, so these positions look sort of stretchy, but in reality you can make it work with smaller hands uh, the same way you can with anything else. You just kind of figure out the right angles and don't be so convinced that you're not going to be able to do the stretch that you don't investigate because chances are that you can kind of educate your fingers and teach them to move at a slightly different angle in a way that facilitates stretching more. Because with my big hands, what I can actually do that a lot of people can't do is, you know, stretch like a whole fourth from like a C to an F or something. But I'm not asking you to do that here. We're only doing a major third is the biggest stretch. So please, if you have small hands, don't fret. <laughs> fret, there's frets here. You can totally play this uh, regardless of your hand size, you know, unless maybe you're like 12 or 13 or something, in which case you kind of have to be patient as your hands and the rest of your body grow into adulthood. Uh, but you can still make this happen. Um, I've had young students and they figure out how to do stretches over time. The other big issue with this exercise is getting lost, particularly because these positions aren't starting on the root note of the scale most of the time. Even though we're in C major the whole time, the pattern we're moving through is sort of like we're going through all the modes of C. So if you're not used to practicing modes, it can be easy to get lost as you shift. So my big trick for not getting lost is every time you're in a new position, so say we're just starting out at the, be at the beginning with the low E, Find within that little octave and a fifth box that's that position, find all your C's, which is our root note in this case. So there's only this one C here on the A string. So if you've practiced scales in one octave before, if you can find your root note, you should be able to recognize the shapes that are going to get you to that root note and around it. So say we get through that, and now we're in this position, where are our root notes? We got one here and one here. Now we shift again. Where are our root notes? Right here, right here. Same as the last position. Now we go up again. Now where are our root notes? We got one right here, one right there. 
so if you find yourself getting lost as you do this exercise, just every time you do one of the shifts, stop yourself, think what C's are within the range of this position. Now I'm up here and I've got that one and that one. Because if you know where the root notes are, then every time you shift, you'll recognize, oh, this is like a little portion of the scale shapes I'm used to playing, but they're getting all rotated around and mixed with each other in these new and thrilling ways. So if you know where your C's are, the chances of getting lost are much, much, much lower. That's the fundamentals of this exercise. I hope that I've explained them sufficiently. If you have any questions, please comment below, and I do check the comments when I put out a new video and I'll be happy to clarify. But hopefully I've uh, iterated all the basics of this exercise sufficiently, and hopefully the sheet music will help you understand it too. But now I want to talk about how to actually use this exercise besides just playing it in C major the way I have written out. Uh, the main way that I've practiced it and that I would recommend you trying it is to start with one key, which in this case I'll say C major because that's what I wrote out for you, Get really comfortable with that, understand how it all fits together, and then start practicing it in other major keys. You can go around in fourths, so uh, you go C major, then F major, then B flat major, E flat major, etc. You can do it chromatically if you want to. I like doing it in fourths because if you're moving the roots around in fourths, then uh, only one note is gonna change in the key signature every time. So you'll go from C major, which is no sharps or flats, to F major, which is one flat, to B flat, which is two flats, etc. So I, I find that to be a logical progression. So work this with all your keys, all your modes, anything you can think of, just run it through this beastly machine. Uh, and that's one function of this exercise, which is the neck knowledge function. The other function is just getting your speed up because you can start cranking this thing. And the cool thing is that since this exercise isn't bound by starting and ending on a root all the time, these uh, patterns that you're imprinting under your fingers are actually really directly usable for playing fast little scale runs. Etc. So work this in lots of different keys and also work it at different tempos and try to speed it up and it'll take care of a lot of parts you're playing. Um, and I think that this exercise is really key to helping you if you're in the situation where you feel like you can play in this little box. But if you want to do a little thing outside of that box and you get lost, the beast will help you. It is a gnarly beast, you must learn to tame it, but it will reward you in the end by letting you ride on its back and taking you to treasures and things. That's a lot of imagery for such an abstract concept, but there you go. Thank you guys for watching. This is the best scale exercise I know, so I hope that uh, you'll use it to your advantage to exponentially multiply your ability to traverse the deck of the bass guitar. And if you uh, want some help applying this or help with anything else in your playing, I do have some uh, slots open for online lessons if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one attention, uh, troubleshooting your technique, learning songs, just generally developing musically, getting out of a rut, anything like that, I'd be happy to work with you. Just shoot me an email, josh at joshfossgreen.com or uh, send me a message on YouTube and we can talk about that. If you would like to support me in continuing to make excellent free bass lessons for the world of YouTube, please click on this thing in front of my face and check out my Patreon page. Patreon is like a crowdfunding thing like Kickstarter, except it's more ongoing and we get to sort of build a little community there and hang out and talk about bass and stuff. And uh, you can contribute at different levels, get different prizes and stuff. It's all optional. You can watch these videos for free, obviously. But uh, if you would like to make me happy and be a nice person and have me write, LOLs, you're so nice then you can do that. Thank you guys for watching. Please apply this exercise to your playing and tell me how awesome it is. And I will talk to you later. Peace out.